Hello friends, in this video we are going to discuss about ethical principles involved in research. When we look at the history of research, we had plenty of bitter stories in the past. One such notable blunder in history of research is the Nazi experiments which involved so many unethical researchers. The curiosity for the advancement in medical research made Nazis to do lots of unethical principles. From there, the ethical principles of research has been evolved. After the unethical research done by Nazi experiments, the Nuremberg trial and code came into play which insisted on the voluntary consent of the humans for conducting any health research then nearly 20 years later the declaration of helsinki came in which there was a relaxation of the conditions of the consent was implemented they introduced the independent committee's role in health research they relaxed the conditions for consent and they considered the conditions where benefits overweigh risk so as i said historically nazi experiments were literally a scar present in health research then came the declaration of helsinki and one cannot leave the tuskegee trials done on syphilis and followed by which the belmont report in 1979 came which also again refined the ethical principles which was in practice currently in india icmr policy statement on ethical considerations which involved research on human subjects was implemented in 1980 then the recent national ethical guidelines in India for biomedical and health research involving human participants was implemented in 2017. The above mentioned incidents were examples of bad research followed by rectifications and the current guidelines. But what really is the exact ethical principles which we need to follow in our research? So the answer is here. There are four main cardinal principles of ethics in research. That is number one is your autonomy. Number two is your beneficence. Number three is the non-maleficence. Number four is justice. There are many other ethical principles coined around. Those ethical principles may be directly linked with this four ethical principles or sometimes it may be not related. So in this presentation, we are going to see these four cardinal principles of ethics. So first is the autonomy. Autonomy means it is the respect to the right of the individual to take decisions. What the patient like, what the patient wish, and what is the patient's decisions? So based on that, if we conduct the research, then it is the respect for autonomy of the participants. But conventionally, many times this principle is overridden by other ethical principles like justice or beneficence. While using the words compulsory, mandatory, we must understand that we are violating the autonomy of the patients. In research, how we insist the autonomy is by the practice of consent in the medical practice, which is essentially a proof of respect for the autonomy. Then to ensure the autonomy, we should insist that the withdrawal from research is always possible for the participants. Privacy and confidentiality essentially comes under the overall umbrella of autonomy. Second ethical principle that is beneficence. Many times people combine this second principle beneficence and non-maleficence as one single ethical principle that is beneficence and non-maleficence. In this presentation I have made it as two separate headings which means beneficence is what is good for the participant or the patient. So what is beneficial to the patient will be addressed in the ethical principle beneficence. Same way non-maleficence means absence of doing any harm to the participant. Hippocrates says says primum non nocere which means first do no harm. It is nothing but Hippocrates states that the first ethical principle we should follow is that we should not harm the patient. So when we talk about beneficence, if we are not providing beneficence to the patient, that is also an ethical violation which happened in this Tuskegee syphilis study. They were all ethically correct. Only thing is they have not provided the essential required treatment for the syphilis patients for decades together because the study intention was to study the natural history of syphilis. So in that course, they were denied of treatment with penicillin, which was later found out and later they were compensated and later the US government apologized. So this is for Nazi experiments, which involves harm in their practice. Now the fourth principle is justice. Justice means what is fair in the situation or right for the situation. You need to consider all the ethical principles and you need to take a right decision and you should act upon. That principle is called as justice. Some consider this research integrity within this justice. Under research integrity, we have separate headings such as honesty, transparency, accountability, respect and rigor. So research integrity sometimes can be defined by being abstinent from any research misconduct. That is avoiding any research misconduct in 
in our study for example fabrication falsification plagiarism conflict of interest so these are all some of the research misconduct which researchers should keep themselves away in order to maintain the research integrity which is in a form to maintain our last ethical principle that is justice to sum up we have four cardinal principles of ethics that is autonomy beneficence non maleficence and justice we had discussed consent privacy and confidentiality within autonomy we had discussed what is beneficence and non maleficence then we had justice where we talked about integrity which is in a way being abstinent from any research misconduct practices such as fabrication falsification of data plagiarism conflict of interest thanks for watching this video if you like this video please share it to your friends if you haven't subscribed to our channel please subscribe thank you for watching